This is lesson 31 in module three. And in this lesson, we're gonna be interpreting division word problems. Sometimes when we're doing division, we're looking for the size of groups. So we're trying to find the size of the groups that we have. Or we're trying to find the number of groups. So let's look at an example of each of these kinds of problems. For the first one, Dr. Casey has 1,868 milliliters of medicine. So let's draw our tape diagram. And as always with division, we start out with a total. So we have 1,868 milliliters of medicine. She pours equal amounts of the medicine into four containers. So in this problem, we know how many groups there are. We know there's four, and one group is a container. What we want to find out is how many milliliters of medicine are in each container. So this is an example of finding the size of the groups. We know how many groups there are, and we want to know what the size is of the groups in this situation, the groups being the containers, and we want to know how much medicine is in each container. So we have 1,868 milliliters. We're dividing it equally among four containers. We have 1,000, which we can't divide by four, so we're going to decompose it into hundreds. So we have 18 hundreds. With that, we could put four in each group, and we will have used 16 hundreds, leaving us two, which will decompose into 20 tens and add to the six that we already have. So four times six is 24, which leaves us with two tens, which will decompose into ones and add to the eight that we have. So we can put seven ones in each group with no remainder, we've used everything. So based on this, one container would contain 467 milliliters of medicine. Let's check our results by multiplication. Seven times four is 28. Six times four is 24, plus two is 26. 14, 4 times 4 is 16, plus 2 is 18, so our answer checks. So for the answer, each container contains 467 milliliters of medicine. So this is an example of the first problem type where we're finding the size of the groups. Let's look at a different one. In this problem, that we have 232 people who are driving to a conference. So we have a total number of people If each car holds four people, including the driver, how many cars will be needed? So in this circumstance, in this type of question, we know the size of the group. There's four, our group is a car, and there's four people in each car, but we wanna know how many cars we need. So this is a second type of problem where we know the size of the group, but we want to know how many groups we have. So we s take our total number of people and how many can fit into one car and divide. We can't 
divide 200s, so we go and decompose them into 10s, so we have 23 10s. With that, we can put 5 in each group. 5 times 4 is 20, which gives us 3 10s left, which will decompose into 1s and add to the 2 ones that we have. So we have 32 ones. 8 times 4 is 32, and we have no remainder. So here we know that we will need fifty-two cars, fifty-eight cars. So this is an example of we know the size of the group, but we need to know how many groups there are, and in this problem the groups are cars. Let's just check before we move on with multiplication. 8 times 4 is 32. 5 times 4 is 20 plus 3 is 23. So our calculations are correct. Let's use what we've learned to try some problems in our problem set. All right, for number one, it says draw a tape diagram and solve. The first two tape diagrams have been drawn for you. Identify if the group size or the number of groups is unknown. So number one, Monique needs exactly four plates on each table for the banquet. If she has 312 plates, how many tables is she able to prepare? So here we're looking for numbers of group, number of groups. Because we know the size of the group, that's four, because there's four plates on each table, but we need to know how many groups we have. So we're going to take our total number of plates, divide it into groups of four. With three hundreds, we can't divide that by four, so we have to decompose those into tens. So now we have 31 tens. So we can do seven times four is 28. So that leaves us with three tens. We'll decompose those into ones and add them to the two ones that are already there. So now we have 32 ones, four groups. So we can put eight in each group. Eight times four is 32, and we have no remainder. So based on this, uh, Monique would need Seventy-three tables. Okay, pause the video and try number two. Okay, this is the other type of problem. In this one, we know our total. We know how many groups we have. We have five classrooms, but we're looking for the number in each group. So we're going to divide 2,365 into five classrooms. We can't divide 2,000, so we'll decompose the thousands into hundreds. We have 23 hundreds. We can use four in each group. Four times five is 20. We have three hundreds left over. We'll decompose them into tens. So now we have 36 tens. 7 times 5 is 35, which leaves us with 110, which will decompose into 5 ones. So we have 15 ones, so we can put 3 in each group. And we have no remainder. So based on this, we know that each classroom is going to get 437 books. Let's double check our calculations by using multiplication. 3 times 5 is 15. 7 times 5 is 35 plus 1 is 36. 4 times 5 is 20 plus 3 is 23. So our calculations check. And each classroom received 473 books. And here we're looking for the size of the groups.
Notice how the tape diagrams look different. Here our unknown is the number of books. Here our unknown is the size of each of each group. And here we're looking at how many groups do we have. Okay, you try number three. Okay. So we start with our tape diagram. We have a total of 1,503 kilograms of rice packed into sacks. Each sack weighs three kilograms. So we want to know how many sacks we have. So for this one, we're looking at number of groups. So let's divide our total into groups of three. Three into 15 hundreds would be five. Five times three is 15. We don't have any tens, so we put zero tens in our quotient. We didn't use any tens. We have three ones left. We'll put one in each group. We'll check with multiplication. And our calculations checked. So to answer the question, one, 501 sacks of rice were packed. Okay, read number four, stop the video, figure out which type of problem it is, draw the correct tape diagram and solve the problem. Okay, for this one, we know Rita baked, baked five batches of cookies. So for here, we know how many groups there are. Each group is a ba batch of cookies. There was a total of 2,400 cookies baked, and we, if the same, if each batch contains the same number of cookies, how many cookies were in a batch? So we're looking for um, the size of the group. So we have a total of 2,400 cookies and five batches. So we're going to look to divide the 24 hundreds we have, we can put four in each group. Four times five is 20, leaving us with four hundreds. We don't have any tens. Added together, we have 40 tens. So we can put eight tens in each group. And we've used all our tens. We also have no ones, but we have to record in our quotient that we didn't use any ones. So we'll check with multiplication. Zero times five is zero. Eight times five is 40. Four times five is 20 plus four is 24. So our, our calculations check out and there were 480 cookies in each batch. And the question here asks us how many were in four batches. So since we know how much was in one, we could multiply by four to get how many there are in four batches. So 480 times 4 was 1,920. So there are 1,920 cookies in four batches. Okay, read number 5, pause the video, figure out which kind of problem it is. Do your tape diagram and solve the problem. Okay, here we know that Sarah drove a total of 
1,005 miles in five days. And we want to know how far she ran it, how far she drove in three days. So to do that, we can figure out how far she drives in one day by dividing 1,005 by five. So how many fives in 10 hundreds? There would be two. So we've used the hundreds. There aren't any tens, so we note no tens in the quotient. But we have five ones. We can put one in each group. So we've used all of them. We can check with multiplication to make sure our calculation is correct, and it is. So this is how much she drove in one day. To, so to know how much she drove in three days, we'll take this number and multiply by three. So this would be 603. So Sarah drove 603 miles in three days. And that concludes this lesson 31.